together up here. From the breaking waves on our rock-bound coast, through towering woods beneath stormy skies, over icy ground and granite hills, we ride together over the bridges that bind us, the fire in our hearts that fed a revolution, through falling leaves across iron paths. The roll of the stirring drums unearths the humble, hungry, and fun. We ride together up here. When the lantern is raised, we answer its call, as strong as pines in winter, uniting every village and town, whether here, there, or anywhere. We ride together. These are your riders, your lantern players, the pride of New England. Like those before them, they embrace the challenge. Every kick, every pass, every tackle, every free jack on their feet. The anthem of freedom on our lips. We ride together up here. Hello and welcome to the New England Free Jacks Midnight Ride Series. We're back. It's been a while. This is episode number eight in our monthly live shows called Let's Sell Out Quincy. I'm Dallas Stafford, former US 7 Eagle and current World Rugby commentating, acting as your host for the next 60 minutes. We've made a small time change today to accommodate the small little match going on between the British and Irish Lions and South Africa A, commonly known as the Springboks, which kicks off at 2 p.m. Eastern. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for sharing an hour with us and supporting the Free Jacks. I want to give a special thank you to our show director, Joe Shepard, the big ship, as he's known. He's recovered from triple bypass surgery. He gave us all a scare, but we're happy to have him back in the director's chair. Great to have you there, my friend. So let's switch across to the rugby side of things. Can you believe Major League Rugby, the season is almost done, the regular season. It's been tremendous. You can get to the Free Jacks home match on July 18th. Tickets are going fast as a hotcake. So make sure you get there at the new venue the Veteran Memorial Stadium in Quincy, kickoff 7 p.m. on July 18th. We'll take a look at the conference standings ahead of round 18. And wow, there is two in each conference that will make the playoffs on July 24 and 25. The Free Jacks just miss out, but they can make a huge statement if they defeat the number one team in the East this weekend, which means they would have beaten three of the four top teams in the playoffs. Next up, I want to extend a huge thank you to the amazing partners at the Free Jacks, Aloe Therapeutics, Delta Airlines, our Bella Insurance, Baxter Brewing, and Dude Wipes have been amazing. Plus the U.S. Army, Giant Pro, Feldskun, Mui, Chiropractic, Fox Rock, Abington Alehouse, New England, Grass Fed, and Hot Shot. So wonderful to have these partners involved in Season 4 of Major League Rugby. Well, what do we have in store for the show today? Plenty of action. This takes a slightly different format, though. I was able to attend a pool recovery session with the squad this morning. Chatted to Coach Ryan Martin for his weekly Coach's Corner. I got Scottish Flyer, Dougie Fife in the mix. Team Captain Joe Johnston. Also, we'll chat to CEO Alex Magleby, the bus Jackson Thebus, the wheelbarrow Harry Barlow, and a fantastic group called Jack's Rangers. Just remember our house rules. Share this on social media wherever you can. Just flog it on there if you can. Comment as many times you like. We'll pop up your messages of support because I know the players and the staff and everybody loves seeing those in action. So we'll get right to it. Um, we have next up a special message from a very special guest. Let's hear from King George. who will be attending this weekend in Quincy. Hey, Free Jacks fans, this is George Killebrew, the commissioner of Major League Rugby. First of all, I want to congratulate you on your new home in Quincy. I look forward to seeing you there this weekend. I'm coming up to check out the new digs. It's been a wonderful year for Major League Rugby, and the New England Free Jacks have played great. Look forward to seeing you this weekend. Come say hello. Thanks. We certainly will. Always great to have the support from the commish. Another brilliant character is, of course, is head coach Ryan Martin. And I love the weekly coach's corner with the muscle man himself. It's very sad that this will be his last match in charge of the Free Jacks. So let's hear from the man himself on this week's catch up. Coming in poolside, Free Jacks recovering from their session of the massive win. Coach Ryan Martin, coach's corner up right now. I'm Dallin Snap, it's scared of nothing. You little. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Coach, next question. <laughs> Coach's corner. Wow, that was an interesting start, I'll say the least. Um, did you pay him? Set him up for that? Uh, no, I didn't, but uh, I was very impressed. Biggest hit since the Beatles, my friend. All right, soaking here after the pool session. Let's go back to your birthday this weekend. How was that? 
Oh, it was, it was awesome. Um, obviously, it fell on game day, uh, the 11th on the Sunday. So, um, what a great gift to, to have a performance like that and um, a, a good win against a very good team um, in very tough conditions. So, uh, that was kind of the icing on the cake. I was going to say, you'd be proud of that performance. Uh, let's talk about how did you guys structure the victory against the Arrows. Again, they've been brilliant all season long. They've been up and down. They've been away from 118 days away yeah. from home, you know, but uh, you guys took it to them. Yeah, I was very wary. I, I knew it was their last game. Um, they had everything to play for in terms of signing off their season in the right way. And obviously they've got a pretty tight in that group. So actually, we, we, we were very, very respectful of that game, um, knowing that they were going to bring something special. Um, and I knew some of their family had flown in for the game as well. So we, we actually treated it like a test match, to be honest. Um, and I think from zero to about the 60 minute mark, we, we achieved that. We played a really good test match style of football, put the ball in the right areas of the field, um, kept pretty tight, you know, got our mall going, um, kept tight on D, took the opportunities on attack when they came. And at that point, we're sitting pretty pretty nicely around the 60 minute mark. I think you know, we're up around that 28 point mark. Um, then uh, in terms of where we went wrong, we, we got pretty loose from 60 to 80. Um, Always started seeing a little bit of false gold and shifting the ball and we gave the ball back in, in bad areas of the field and Toronto capitalised on that, good on them. Uh, but you know to come away from that very tough conditions, it was super humid, the ball was like soap, so uh, I was really proud of, of our team to be honest. Yeah, good little bit to present. And then uh, you know while we are uh, at the pool here, you've got the pool session on the crack, what else are you focusing on this week? Oh, what, what a great week. You've got the, the number one team of the competition coming to our house. Uh, we had a real sour taste. We played them down there after the match. We, we were really, that was probably the, our biggest disappointing performance, um, and the boys really felt it. And um, we had some clips today of the previous game, and, and where Atlanta had really dealt to us, and just to let the boys know what's coming. Um, so we're, we're, we're super excited. Number one's coming to our house. Um, we believe, you know, they're the big bully of the competition. So there's only one way to deal with the bully. Um, people are going to set up on Sunday. And if you analyse your season, looking back from when you got here, you probably didn't know as much as you obviously learnt about the American rugby landscape, the travelling, geographical reason, the East Coast Conference so strong. It's, it's an amazing competition. It's long, so that's probably something you've got to factor in. Like, the depth of your squad gets tested severely uh, throughout the, you know, you've got to have a really good depth and people the ability to, to quickly transition into the starting team. That's probably my biggest thing. As soon as you get an injury, um, you can get yourself in a bit of trouble. So that's probably the, the biggest thing. Obviously the travel factor, um, we're really lucky with with uh, TK, he, he does a great job around the off-field, making sure the trips run smoothly and um, you know he really uh, dots the I's and crosses the T's and I don't think our leadership group ever said we've had a bad experience in terms of things going wrong off-field um, on our away trips, so it's a tribute to him and that's just been really respecting the team and making sure we can prepare properly. Um, but it, it is a very tough competition and you have to be on every single week. Um, look at Seattle you know, and good on them in the, in the weekend, the way they perform for their home crowd. So, uh, it's, it's an amazing comp in terms of that, how close it is, and if you're 2% off, you're going to lose, so that's probably my biggest learning. And let's talk about Quincy at home, your final game, you said the number one side, but what does it mean for your fans? I know a ton of them are dressing up as Dougie Fife, they're wearing the kilts, so huge support from the local followers. Yeah, what, yeah, what a nice way to finish the season at, at a new venue, um, and, and build a little bit of um, excitement around what's going to happen in 2022 with the Free Jacks. Um, it's a great way to not only sign off our season but start uh, the new generation of what's, what's to happen. Um, and it looks like a beautiful field. The proximity uh, of the spectators to the ground is going to add some huge energy and as you mentioned it's the, the Dougie Fife appreciation uh, game which I think is awesome considering how he's played for us. And coach, yourself personally, we obviously have a huge amount of respect and thank you for what you've done for this team and this, this area of the world. Uh, it's no secret you will be leaving us at the end of the year, unfortunately. Um, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, uh, so I'm heading off to the, the Melbourne Rebels, uh, which is a, a super rugby team and they play in a trans-Tasman competition with all the New Zealand teams. And fr from a young fella um, playing rugby, but also starting as a coach back in 2007, I, my dream was always to be a super rugby coach, um, and yeah, it's come around, come around, and it's uh, I'm pretty excited, and it's a massive opportunity uh, for me to, to coach at that level of the game, and I'm very thankful of the Free Jacks um, in terms of the contractual status. They obviously I signed for three years, but they uh, they have a, an out clause at the end of each year, which, which you know lets you pursue opportunities. And I think that's the special thing about the Free Jacks. Um, 
and it's one of the mottos we've had this year is you know loyalty to the players futures but the the, uh, the ownership group also have loyalty to the management's futures and and they uh, you know they gave me the greatest blessings to, to take this opportunity so I'm very thankful um, in the ownership group and the ability for me to progress my own career and um, uh, I really saw this opportunity uh, was particularly related to the, the launching pad that the Free Jacks gave me to come in as a head coach and, and uh, apply my craft and um, obviously I do things a little bit differently which was noticed which is pretty cool as well so um, yeah I'm very thankful for that and uh, it's a massive uh, opportunity for myself and um, obviously I'll, I'll always have the, the Free Jacks spirit and whatever I do um, and uh, yeah really looking forward to getting to Melbourne so I'll head there uh, late September, we'll start pre-season October the 4th, so hopefully our Free Jack supporters over here now have a new team on the other side of the globe to support the Melbourne Rebels. We certainly do. Mono, thanks for everything my friend, let's get a little... Oh, Russell, no, okay, no, don't cut that out. Uh, thanks again for everything, pal. Truly amazing, the stash is glorious. Uh, whoever takes the next role is big shoes to fill. Yeah, well thanks, thanks to all the people that have watched this and to yourself and everyone else that has supported the Free Jacks. It's a pretty special organisation and I think you'll see the pay in the coming years. Awesome. Free Jacks Live, you sleek sensations. Make sure you catch the final match of the season in 2021. It's going to end on a high. It's going to be in Quincy. And there will be some jars funneled and some teams will be going down, namely Rugby ATL. See you then. What a legendary coach. Always so special to speak to you, Coach Mardo. Uh, we'll miss him for sure. That's, that, that's a fact. Uh, let's talk about merchandise. Don't forget to get your merch at the Free Jacks store, which can be ordered in the boatload. Something for everyone, every time, every moment. You'll look sleek in all these various items. We've got home and away jerseys. We've got hats. We've got T-shirts. Anything you can think of, it's there at the store. Click purchase, click buy, get some of your favorite kits items there. Brilliant stuff. Well, next up, we have our captain, Joe Johnston, one of the best players in Major League Rugby this season. Let's check in with Cappy right now. On display here at the Free Jacks, they do something different in this part of the world. Free Jacks Live takes a different form where if you've just been tackled in the pool, a bunch of legends here on display. Joe Johnson, one of the hard men, the mechanics, tools flying everywhere. Uh, what a season, my friend. Look back on the, the past 17 weeks and uh, how's it gone for you? Oh, it's been great. It's been a, you know, it's been a pretty cool journey. Um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, getting real close to all the boys, been, uh, you know, been living with a lot of them. So. Yeah, getting to know them real well, and I've enjoyed uh, trainings and, and playing uh, footy here. So, yeah. And when you go back and you look before you came here, you obviously knew a bit about Major League Rugby. What is your now overall impression now that you played almost everybody? Yeah, well, like I, you know, I fell in love with the comp. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around it, and I know when we play our home games, you know, the crowd, it, it's, it's, it's awesome to play in front of the crowd. Um, they get behind it, and, and um, I think the, the league's only going to get better. So I'm excited. I was happy to play this year, and I'm excited to play next year. Yeah, listen, well, it's a huge honour to have you this side. You've got huge supporters back home as well. Uh, a quick message for them that supported you through thick and, thick and thin. Yeah, I mean, my, my parents, and they, they, they watch me every weekend, and they always uh, give me a good shout-out and wish me good luck. And then the old man lets me know uh, how I play and good and bad, and, and uh, he, they're always there for me. So, um, yeah, really, really happy to have them watching. That's awesome. We also have a question from the fans that wrote in. They said, do you model your stash on Coach Martin, and when will you catch up? <laughs> I think I had my mo before him. I've had it for years now. Um, no, yeah, look, I, I don't think the mo's going anywhere. And this, and this, the back, the back little tuft, is that based on any one of your front row forwards? Because <laughs> you've got all. some great mullets in that team. Yeah, um, Eagle's probably the one with the longest mullet. I think yeah. I'm coming in second. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just the, the bros gave me this haircut, and um, so I just haven't shaved it since. So. Let's talk about Coach Ryan Martin. He leaves at the end of the season. You've, you've worked with him before, obviously, in the past. Uh, what has he brought to this side, in particular the Ford pack? Because you guys have played some inspired yeah. rugby. Yeah, like he's, uh, you know, he's a class coach, and I, I've enjoyed um, being coached by him and learning from him and he does bring like elements of the game where we you know where we play a bit of electric rugby and um, and then he's got some good plays where we just you know can get into our sets and roll into what and roll into our game plan so I've, I've been very happy to work with him and uh, sorry to see him go but like I, I'm always all for coaches you know going on doing bigger better things. Let's talk about the weekend coming up so firstly a new stadium and playing the number one well the number one team in the Eastern Conference yeah. Te tear up for us. Yeah I mean like I, I think we uh, you know, they, they had one up on us last time we played them and uh, look, I think we're, we're just really keen to, to go out there and make sure that we play our rugby and, and you know, give one back a bit. Um, so yeah, it, it's a big game for us. We want to finish strong and we know that they also, you know, they want to roll into the semis really well. So they're going to come out firing 
and I uh, hope we just match it and have a really good game and, and you know give the fans one last hurrah before the end. And speaking of those fans, as the leader of the, of the side, speak directly to our Free Jacks fans who supported you guys and they're going to be coming out and droves on the weekend. Yeah, oh, look, we really appreciate you guys. Um, we love it when we uh, play well and you guys are cheering us on. You know, we always try to get the win for you guys and, and, and we just really appreciate all the, you know, the hype you give at our games and, and all the, and all the um, you know, cheering all that you guys do. So really appreciate you guys and we're going to go out there and hopefully uh, get, one, get one for you as well. Sensational Free Jacks live coming at you here from poolside, if you will, you know, just on the beach cruising. Uh, because we call it the mechanic, is there a favourite tool? that you like to pull out of the, the toolbox? Oh, I'm hopeless. <laughs> Probably the hammer. I'll just see you the can. hammer? Yeah. There we go. It's this guy. Just aiming big. All right, sensations. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us, Big Joe. All the best this weekend. Thank Thanks, Cappy. Thanks. Lovely. So good to see the man in person himself. Brilliant that, uh, you know, the world is opening up in some parts and uh, really, really good to be there with the guys themselves. Well, the Free Jacks has some excellent partners. Huge thanks to these two special sensations, Delta Airlines and Arbella Insurance. We know you've been waiting for more. More excitement, more adventure, more reconnections with people and places you love. The world has been waiting for you. So have we. And now we're giving you even more reasons to rediscover the joy of travel. Hi, yeah, yeah, I'm so ready to... Combining yard tools with cleaning up? Mom! Bad idea. Switching to Arbella and combining your home and auto insurance and saving 20% or more? Great idea. Just tidying up. Find your agent at Arbella.com. Well, next up, we managed to remove the straitjacket from Alex Magleby, and here is the brilliant CEO himself with his latest update. Hi, friends. How are you? Lost my pen. Dartmouth pen. It's from the alma mater. Reminds of my glory days of long sleeve, heavy cotton jerseys in the mud. Crackling boat races. Good to see everybody. Thanks for joining us today with Dallin himself, the world's best rugby commentator. We are about to play in our new venue. How swear word cool is that? We have a new kickoff time and a new location. Kickoff is now 7 p.m. on Sunday, this Sunday, no longer four. That was changed by broadcast a few weeks ago. This game is gonna be nationally televised. It'll be the last Major League Rugby regular season match of the year. It'll be seven o'clock on FS1. We're playing at our awesome new venue in Quincy, the City of Presidents, in Veterans Memorial Stadium. Now you can get there by the red line. There's about a five to ten minute walk, ten minute walk, uh, on the north and the south side. There's a pub or two to pass on the way. Um, or you can drive in. There is street parking that is free. There's parking uh, lots all throughout the stadium up at the middle school and the park. Those also are free. Uh, if you're hanging out near, near your car on the city streets, uh, the wonderful folks of Quincy may ask you not to do so. Uh, so if you're gonna be hanging out your car, catching up with buddies uh, pre-match, uh, you would look to do that in the uh, main parking lot just uh, east of the stadium. Again, that's seven o'clock Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're super excited uh, to, to be at the new venue. We love the support uh, that we received from the ownership group at Union Sports and um, all our fans who uh, were so, so patient uh, while we were uh, having to build temporary infrastructure at Union Point. You know, certainly um, our players as well and our visiting teams who had to be intense as we uh, had a makeshift season to, uh, to make it work. Uh, parking was all over the place and can't thank you enough fans for just your patience as all of the vicissitudes of working with several different owners who claim different rights to, to different spaces uh, you know as we got through that uh, that uh, wild time at Union Point we'll always look back at that very fondly 
but certainly very wild. Now we're in a really awesome location. Uh, we will not have to put up temporary seats or bleachers anymore. Those are all there in a 1937, you know, uh, depression area era WPA type of stadium. Uh, it's glorious. It's got a lot of history. And over the last couple of years, the city of Quincy, along with Heritage, uh, have put in a, a good chunk of change to you know make it world class. There's new locker rooms, bathrooms, upgraded seats, press box, an amazing video board that we're looking forward to learn how to use in the coming days. How do we do this? What, what, are, we, what, are, we, what are we doing? Max, what are you doing on there? <laughs> what are you, change that, change that up. So it's got a great video board. Certainly uh, fired up about that. Uh, a brand new turf field, relatively speaking, built the last two years. Uh, it's soft, it's fast. There are other lines on it for other sports, of course, because the city of Quincy is a big believer in in uh, sports and recreation and, and youth um, sports. We will be able to paint over those uh, on a match-by-match -match basis. We're installing brand new goalposts uh, this week, so all very exciting uh, to create a world-class experience that is very accessible. So that happens Sunday, 7 p.m. We got a bunch of guests coming in. The commissioner of Major League Rugby, George Tillbury, will be there. Thank you, JK, the CEO of USA Rugby. Ross Young will be there. Thank you, Ross. So we're really excited to share uh, our experience uh, with the wider uh, rugby audience. So looking forward to seeing everybody there. Be sure to uh, share with your friends. Uh, we're approaching about two thirds full as of today, and we look forward to making this a sellout. Also, just a massive shout out to our founding members. Last week, the 2022 season tickets went on sale. About half our founding members have already rolled over, uh, which given how crazy this year was and what happened last year with COVID in the season and, and um, just your excitement to continue to build with us um, is pal palatable and palpable, excuse me. And uh, we cannot wait to um, share the experience with, with you this weekend. Uh, and a reminder for those who haven't had a chance to yet, founding member pricing for uh, 2021 tickets are still good for the next two weeks. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you lock those in and public season member um, season memberships will go on sale tomorrow, or sorry, Thursday. So a lot happening um, over the next couple of days. And we're just, um, we're really happy that we're able to have this season in the first place. They were able to share the great game of rugby with more both via the senior team, Free Jacks, but also through the academy teams, uh, gave a lot of opportunities where those opportunities weren't uh, possible based on uh, the pandemic. And so we're just really excited that we were able to do so at much of, at a lot of our levels of the academy. And certainly that has a lot of room to grow in the coming years, uh, providing more opportunities for people to play at a higher level and get identified for higher honors. So we're certainly thrilled that that's off, off and running. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you Sunday. Super excited. Uh, go Jacks. Honestly, one of the most unique and interesting characters, always entertaining us, Mags. Great to get the scoop from the man himself. Former US Eagle, former US coach, current glowing flame. Uh, he is certainly the man in charge. And so listen, thanks for all the comments so far on Facebook Live. Keep them coming, keep them flying. I know we changed our time to an hour earlier today, but great to have you with us. Three more partners I want to highlight uh, during the show. Alloy Therapeutics, they've been in the front of our jersey. Superb to have them involved. You see Billy Tolotau sporting one of them right there. Dude Wipes, one of the new partners on display. Very creative advertising as well on their part. The execs doing a fine job there, supporting our boys. And back to Brewing, of course. Sinking a few cold ones this weekend. Who's with me? I'll be there at the Free Jack Stadium. The new one, sinking a few with you and the local fans. Uh, so I can't wait for that as well. Uh, well, earlier today, I managed to catch up with the top try scorer for the Free Jacks, former US Sevens World Series star for Scotland, Dougie Fife. Plenty of kilts will be worn this weekend to celebrate the old Dougie. And here is a Scotsman right now. Guest all the way from Scotland. There'll be fans in their hundreds wearing kilts this weekend at Quincy. Thank you, Fife. Welcome to the show, my friend. What up to your hair? Um, it's all the sun, all this Boston sun, you know, it's got to. You're not used to it, right? I no, mean, this no. Is... Yeah, exactly. This is, this is good for me. This is the best summer that I've not seen for years, so yeah. And that's the worst summer we've had here because it's been the, the most rain we've had. 
Yeah, well, so I've heard, but yeah, no, but the few days they've had, it's been really hot and I've loved it, yeah, I've been out there tanning. Give us your overall perspective, Major League Rugby, of course, your full first full season, yeah. how have you found it? I've been really impressed with it, I've been uh, surprised at how good the level of standard has been already for such a, a young league, and there's obviously a lot of big names from across the world playing here, but the, especially the American boys, I, I've been so impressed with the standard and just the, the kind of athletes that America brings, so yeah, I, I loved it. Uh, the fans have really rallied around you personally as one of the players that have come in, uh, do, do you love seeing them wearing the kilts and having the Scottish flags going, and, yeah. and, and all those tries have really put you on the leaderboard, hasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. well, our crowd's awesome, you see it yeah. down at Weymouth recently, uh, you know, our home record kind of shows itself that our fans are brilliant and they definitely help us and it's, it's cool to see I've seen a few Scotland flags in the crowd it's been yeah. it's been real nice to see yeah uh, even sporting one of your shirts right now it's a bit yeah. wet there uh, but listen the, the question we had on Facebook live is how's the English lessons going here because oh. <laughs> I yeah. will say the Scottish accent is very hard to understand yeah. yours at least is okay but there are some versions of the Scottish regions very tough to to decipher well no I'm around Harry Barlow he's he's keeping me uh, he's keeping me pretty tight but then Obviously the Euros at the weekend, he's a bit, he's a bit quiet so far, so um, yeah. No, he's teaching me, he's teaching me all. Good. Let's talk off the field stuff. Have you found Boston? What's it like living in the US? Yeah, obviously at the start it was a bit hard with Covid. You yeah. couldn't do much, but it's opened up now. I've, I've managed to see a lot of Boston. Yeah. Uh, I've had a great time here. We've got, obviously a lot of us are foreign here, so we've yeah. had to visit all the, all the hot spots. And then, yeah, I've really enjoyed this, especially the city. Especially, yeah. And I saw you went to the Red Sox game. You, have you been to the Celtics and some of the other sports? Yeah, we managed to go to Celtics game. Yeah. Not a Bruins game. Um, we managed to get to Celtics. We go to Red Sox games. Uh, we've been down to Fenway a lot. Yeah. Even just to the bars around it, just to get soak up the atmosphere. And I know I'm, I'm a big baseball fan now. Yeah, good, good. I love it. Now, listen. Good news for our fans and for everybody else. You're staying on another year. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Good. Fantastic. Can't wait. Um, give us a preview to the weekend's game against Rugby ATL. The best defense in the league. And you're one of the best attackers in the league, so what tricks you've got up your sleeve for us? Well, you know, Ryan's been brilliant at picking up uh, teams' traits and he's got a few little tricks for them. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so we look forward to pulling some out of the bag. We've got some uh, some real good ones this week, so hopefully we get a chance to, to show what we can do. And, you know, they, they were gone, they've had a great season, yeah. and, you know, we just want to finish strong. Yeah. We do one for our fans as well. Good. Speaking of the fans, final note from you to them, the local fans, and the fans supporting you back home. Yeah, uh, thanks for the support the whole season. It's been brilliant, and, you know, I look forward to seeing what, what Quincy can bring and seeing some of the kilts out there and the, the tartan so yeah I, I can't wait for this weekend. You heard it from William Wallace himself we'll see you there on the weekend Free Jacks Live over and out. Oh brilliant update from the man himself and um, I've got some other updates as well for the Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy pre-match entertainment will include a cornhole tournament so there's several slots still available apparently so get your friends sign up for this bit of magic have a bit of fun before the kickoff, which is at 7 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, July 18th. I can reveal the corner will have a Free Jacks All-Star team named with some prizes following the tournament. So make sure you go to our website, freejacks.com, get your tickets for the game, bring some friends, play some corn toss. I might even be there for the cornhole and uh, throw a few around, you know. So I also got a chance to speak to Dougie Fife's English teacher, Harry Barlow, the wing three quarter, earlier today. What a huge honor and pleasure. We have the wheelbarrow joining us on Free Jacks Live. You slippery eel. Welcome, my friend. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be on here. Okay, good. Now, before we start, I believe you've been giving Dougie Fife English lessons. Is that true? Um, yeah, I've been trying to give him English lessons. I've been trying to turn him into an England soccer fan as well, but that didn't work, especially after we lost the final. But yeah, it's going all right. Yeah. Good, yeah, because the, the Scots are hard to understand. So he had, a, he had a laugh with us early on the show, so that was great. Now, let's get into your nickname, The Wheelbarrow. Tell us again how you got that. So uh, I believe it was down in uh, New Orleans. The uh, NOLA commentators, I got the ball out wide and I was lucky enough to bat, um, kind of score a try. And on the commentary, watching it back, it said uh, Harry Barrow. And then it said Harry Barrow is barreling in. And then from there, as you know, rugby players and the boys they never let me hear the end of it. So that's been the nickname since that. And, and uh, I still don't know why, but that's, you know, I'm rolling with it. I like it. It's mine now. So it's, it, it's good. It's, it sticks and it's, it just rolls off the tongue nicely. So <laughs> that's a good exactly. one. Exactly. Let's talk about how you've enjoying living in Boston again and uh, the American adventure you're having. Yeah, Boston's great. I mean, having traveled around the whole country, you can see why Boston's loved by so many people, not just in the US, but internationally. It's such a great city. So much history, the food's great, the people are awesome. Um, the weather sometimes can be dodgy in, winter, in uh, summer as of the moment, but uh, no, Boston's great, absolutely love it. I've had a fantastic year and um, yeah, lots of uh, clam chowder and lobster rolls, that's the best bit. 
Good. Well, listen, I was telling Dougie as well earlier that at least the while the summer hasn't been as hot, folks with your your skin, your olive skin <laughs> can complexion, you know, and, and you don't get burned too much. The John Polans of the world as well, you know? Exactly. Yeah. JP and uh, Harrison Boyle have been saved this summer. They've gotten away with it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The ghost. Let's move on to your role within the squad. Initially, you were on the bench in, in the team. Then you started starting and then you've just been smashing in tries all season. So uh, tell us a bit about that. So, yeah, I think I started off this, uh, the season um, in the uh, reserves in games. And that's that's absolutely, uh, that. I remember that that was um, coming into the squad as a young guy. Uh, had a lot to learn. I, you know, I, was, I loved learning off, you know, Mitch Wilson, Dougie Fife, um, Bodine. Um, and then, yeah, I like to think as the season's gone, I've just started to learn off them and improved as a player and as a person. And, um, and then had the faith from Ryan Martin to get that start. And ever since then, you know, in life and in rugby, you get one opportunity and sometimes it goes well and, and you just roll with the ball and roll with life. So, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it and it's been good fun. Well, you turn into a wheelbarrow. People can't stop a wheelbarrow when it's going low. So that has really been fun to watch. Uh, let's talk about the, the culture of the team because that's very, very important. You know, uh, you guys seem like such a tight, tight group. But again, you had 19 new players to start the season. How did you guys form the bond and connect? So on paper, when, um, when you see 19 new players on paper, you think that's going to take ages to connect and coming from all over the world and, and from within the US. But to be honest, since I got here back in March, uh, late February, everyone's just gotten on really well. It's, it's, I know I was at Harlequins for a while and it takes time to get to know people, but here everyone's just absolutely connected on, on such a good level. And, you know, people from all corners of the globe and across the country. And yeah, I think it's, you know, the rugby unites us, but also living together 24 seven. It's, that's why we connected so well. And, you know, I think I've made friends for life here and I'll never forget. And, you know, whatever, whatever goes on and whenever I'm 80 years old, I still remember my, uh, my memories here, but yeah, I think that's why just everyone living together, you know, cooking together. That's it. It's a good, it's a good environment. And, um, with Ryan involved, with Ryan involved definitely helps. And he, you know, cracks the jokes, gets us working hard and, and yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, he seems like a great a great person in charge and uh, folks will definitely miss him next year, but that's awesome. But you mentioned when you turn 80, that's going to be in 65 years' time. So that's a long way away, my friend. <laughs> it is, yeah. It is a long way away. But uh, yeah, as I said, I still remember the uh, I still remember my mates I've made here for sure. Good. Let's switch gears now. You have your final game coming up this season. It's obviously against a very powerful rugby ATL. How's the prep gone, gone for that? So yeah, I think... Um, Last time we played Atlanta, uh, ATL, we had a, from frustration after the game. We felt like we didn't really showcase our full potential. Um, our set piece didn't really go to plan. And that's something, you know, we're focusing on this week is it's our last game. We're at our new stadium. You know, the fans have been great this season. Ryan's leaving. You know, it's it's we need to show our full 100% potential, not just to the fans, but just to end this season off nicely. It's it's just about us. It's us as a group. Um, and focusing on, you know, enjoying each other's company. But then also, you know, once we enjoy each other's company in the game, that's when our, we play our best rugby and when we're having fun. So, yeah, that's the plan. Just get some, maybe some revenge. But, um, yeah, that's, it's been going really well. Good, good. And then talk about that new stadium. You guys have been out there. What's it like? And and, and uh, how different is it compared to, the, you know, the, the previous one in Weymouth? So it's been great at Union Point this season, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a great spot. It um, can be windy at some times in the back three. Uh, that backfield has been a nightmare on some stormy days. But um, no, Union Point's been great. But this, this new stadium, Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy, it's, it's great. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's had fantastic investment over the years. You know, the bleachers, the changing rooms, the turf. It's, you know, even just the location, it, it's, it's great. I really can't wait to get there. It's, it looks like once, you know, we'll be packed out, it'll be a fantastic atmosphere. And, you know, a big screen as well. Big screen and PA system. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait for this weekend. Can't wait for, for the future there or whatever holds. So, yeah, it's going to be an awesome stadium. That's awesome. Yeah, my wife and I are going to catch the train up and make a whole experience of it. And the first time, obviously, at that, that venue and uh, really hope for a strong game from you guys. Now, Will Barrow, final message for the fans, folks watching this live show, folks at home supporting you. Uh, what do you have for them? Oh, just a, just a huge thank you. You know, it's for me personally, but I know for everyone, it's been a tough 18 months. And coming over here, being welcomed to the club by the players, the staff, but most importantly, the fans, just been fantastic. I just want to say thank you. Can't wait to, you know, to see everyone on this weekend. I think it's a Dougie Fife appreciation weekend, which is going to be hilarious and everyone in kilts. But um, yeah, it's just stuff like that. That's why I love the fans. And yeah, I just want to say thank you. 
love your energy and um, yeah, go Free Jacks. Awesome. Well, the wheelbarrow, Harry Barlow, thanks for joining us. You're scarier than Lyme disease. All the best this weekend, my friend. And we'll see you in Quincy. Let's ride. Awesome. Let's ride. Thanks, Dylan. Great to catch up with Harry Barlow, the flying winger. So much fun. Great to see a youngster carving it up on the field as well. So two more partners we want to spotlight. They're the folks at Dude Wipes and Feltskun. Dude Wipes saved my chapped rear from toilet paper. Dude Wipes, along with support from your bros, helps you quit toilet paper. When you try to quit toilet paper for Dude Wipes, you may experience increased levels of swagger, improved freshness, and the urge to tell everyone about Dude Wipes. I can't tell you how great it's been using Dude Wipes. Check your local toilet paper aisle for Dude Wipes today. Dude, now that's fresh. So great to see Feldskuhn involved with the New England Free Jacks. You can get your branded pair at freejacks.com. We know a lot of the fans have them already. I'm going to get mine out this weekend as well, bring them to the game. Also, I love the creativity of Dude Wipes, the social media team. Very funny. Check them out on social media. Right, so far, we've heard from head coach Ryan Martin, Major Rugby Commissioner George Killebrew, Captain Joe Johnston, and top try scorer Dougie Fife. We just saw Harry Barlow. We still have Jack's Rangers to come our fan appreciation uh, group, as well as the large unit, Jackson Phoebus. Uh, so let's catch up with the big man himself, Big Jackson. Somebody as large as a bus, Jackson Phoebus, thanks all for joining us on Free Jacks Live, my quacker. It's a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, listen, you're one of the homegrown American rugby players, a tremendous talent and impact you've made on MLR. Let's touch on your journey, my friend, in sports. Tell us a bit about your football background. Yeah, sure. Uh, I eventually would walk on to the University of Montana after trying out twice. And so I walked on and about one week in of playing tight end, they moved me to offensive line and I proceeded then to gain probably 80 pounds over the next three years. And by the time I was a senior, I was playing offensive tackle and weighing over 300 pounds and playing for the University of Montana. And it was a, it was a great time. Wow. What an unbelievable experience. So, so how much do you weigh now roughly? Mm, 250. Wow, 250. And then how did you, what was your journey like to get to rugby? How did you find it and what was your first experience? Well, my my first experience was my uh, sophomore year in high school. I went to a a club rugby meeting. They were trying to recruit players to play and they put up some YouTube clips and I walked out of that meeting deathly afraid of rugby. And I was like, there's no way anyone can do that. It's impossible. And the, the coach at our high school he kept on me and all my friends who were playing football for the next year. And we joined thinking it would just be something fun to do besides, you know, playing track or doing track and field or tennis. And so I started my junior year and and played for my high school. It was a club sport at the time. It wasn't varsity and then played my senior year. Uh, And then from then on, I I was playing football. And after I was done with football, that same coach, he reached out to me. He was the coach at Indicott college in Beverly, Massachusetts. And he was telling me about the grad school out there and everything in Mystic River. And I came out and visited and loved it and would then enroll that next fall. And the rest is history. That's an epic story. What was the coach's name? Dave Kinkle. Oh, He's still that currently is... the coach at, uh, at uh, Endicott College, yeah. Right. Well, shout out, to, shout out to Dave and, and for keeping yeah. on you, especially because whatever video he showed you made you leave the room thinking, no, I'm never going to do this ever. Yeah, it was probably... Mananu and the beast and you know all those clips you see from like the 2010s of those guys and i mean i i'd played football my whole life and i couldn't even imagine playing rugby <laughs> i was like those guys are a different breed that's amazing and here you are yeah. now playing professional rugby that is such a great story mm-hmm. and also i love i love reading about your background as well you've done tremendous work in the community what kind of activities are close to your heart there yeah you know it's been a while it's been about two years now since i've really done community service but back in montana i i did several um, after school programs, a couple different elementary schools in the area. Playing for the University of Montana, you do a whole lot of community service and, and helping young boys uh, who are, you know, either troubled, 
or need like a positive role model. Uh, I did Big Brothers Big Sisters for about two years, and I'd say that was probably the closest connection I made doing community service, just because I was able to stay with the, you know, the same boy for like I said over two years, and him and I both both bonded. So, uh, Jackson, that's so great. That's that's mm-hmm. awesome. You, using the the power of your position, and then of course, you know, being a role model uh, off the field is so so great. Uh, if you compare this current Free Jacks team that you've been on versus other teams you've played on, what are some of the differences that make this team a bit more special? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, this season, there's been, you know, a lot of ups and downs. We, we won a few games, then we lost a few games, won a few games, you know, and that, that pattern's a pretty hard pattern to break. Um, and I think, you know, we, we lost to NOLA a few weeks ago, and, and that was really tough. We really felt like we came into that game prepared ready to compete. And, and, you know, we did it, 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 the second half kind of fell away from us, but I think just the way we, we reacted from that game really cemented what I had kind of believed in this team was that, you know, we, we may lose, we may, we may play bad, but you know, we're always going to bounce back. We're always going to have each other's back. You know, we didn't get on each other. We just kept pushing each other, you know, that next Monday and Tuesday and, and then went and played Rooney. And that was, I think one of the best games we've had all season. Yeah, I will say I've only been a few times to your training, you know, because of COVID and everything else like that. And I've mm-hmm. seen you guys, your recovery sessions, your team meetings, and it, they're just a great little buzz about everybody about them. They're just generally interested in in being friends with, with their teammates and it doesn't seem like there are many clicks and everyone's having a laugh and having a good time. And I think that's kind yeah. of a, a great thing from an outside perspective. You're looking going, hey, this team is cool. This team is mm-hmm. is really enjoying it out there. Yeah, I mean, we're we're all friends. We're all great teammates. We and the one thing that I think everyone on our team does is we understand that we need to call each other out and, and push each other. We have some great leaders on our team that do that every single day. And, and that's what you really need to be a successful team. And, and it, it may not show always with the wins and losses, but it, it shows with like behaviors and efforts, um, which is something that we, we hold higher than our win loss record. So. Yeah, and, and let's talk about Coach Ryan Martin. This, unfortunately, is his final game. Um, he'll be departing the, our shores. What have you enjoyed about his his coaching style? Uh, besides his mustache, um, <laughs> I would have to say, you know, he, he's always he's always a positive energy. You know, he, he never yeah. he never gets super down on, on any player. He he he's always trying to build players up. He's always trying to remind people of the things that they're good at and the and show people what they can work on. Um, you know, he did that with me in the beginning of the year. Uh, just one thing I had, I had been working on was my body height going into contact with the ball. And, and that was something that I've always struggled with. I think a lot of American players, especially big guys, we, we want to run high and, yeah. you know, bump people off, but getting low, getting to the ground, recycling the ball quicker is, is just as important. So, you know, something that he pointed out to me and showed me the ways to, to work on it. And that's something now that I am pretty proud of that I can hang my hat on. I'm equally as proud as that little stash you got growing on that side of your face. It's okay. I mean, you know, it's all right. <laughs> it's coming in. Let's talk about some advice you have for the younger generation of rugby players, you know, or even just parents that are on the fence mm-hmm. about letting their kids play rugby. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you should give it a try. If you're curious, there's a lot of opportunities now with touch rugby and, you know, way less contact. Um, so you're not coming in. It's, it, you know, you're not coming into practice. Like it's those video clips where everyone's getting laid out and running, you know, it, it doesn't have to be like that at first, you know, you can play flag and touch rugby and kind of get acquainted with it, you know, comparing it to football, I would say rugby as a whole is, is, is safer. You know, you're not, there's not as many huge tremendous injuries like you see in football. You do feel like you got mugged the next day with bruises and cuts and things like that. But those are just, you know, surface wounds that just feel crappy for one day, but then you have a cool bruise or a cool cut or whatever, you know, so I will, I would say that rugby is in a whole safer than football. I mean, you know, you see any, any high tackles, it's a card, you know, any, any dangerous hits you're out. So rugby really doesn't stand for that. We're, you know, in football, they are doing a much better job at cracking down on that, but you still see people using their helmets and shoulder pads uh, as a way to hit people in, in rugby, if you did that, you would hurt yourself as well as the ball carrier. So, you know, as a whole, I, I would say rugby is is a good good sport for young people to play. Um, it teaches you how to tackle, how to run. So, even if football is something you you want to focus on in the springtime or in the off season, rugby is a great option for that. Yeah, that's brilliant advice. Particularly, you know, you played both sports at the highest level. You know, um, yeah. let's talk a little bit about uh, Major League Rugby. In your opinion, you know, you've now seen it for a few years. How has it grown and changed over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, I before the Free Jacks, I I didn't have a whole lot of experience or knowledge with MLR. 
But I mean, I, I've been in New England since the very beginning of the Free Jacks, and I've seen how it's grown. Almost probably once a week, walking in downtown Boston, someone if I'm because I'm always wearing Free Jacks gear. That's all I own. Um, someone will say, "Go Free Jacks," or "Hey, I was just at the game last weekend." So I mean, you you see it every you see it down the street with people, but uh, you you know you you can see it in in the numbers on social media in the stands. You know, all all over the league, it, it's fun to see Utah selling out and and seeing fans back in Seattle, you know, last year in San Diego when we got to play there. I mean, it, it really reminded me of, of college football where you have a lot of people in the stands and cheering and chanting. And, and so I think, you know, MLR is definitely trajectory and upwards in, in that sense. Yeah, it really is. And now we have a bunch of fans obviously supporting you this season, your team. They're on Facebook Live right now watching. Do you have a message for them? We couldn't have done it without our fans. I mean, we're so lucky thinking back to the first game when we were at 10% capacity or, or whatever it was. And I see other teams that had none and I just couldn't even imagine not having anybody at our games because even, even when we were at that quarter percent capacity or 25%, everyone was so loud. I mean, it was awesome. Even at the Rooney game when it was like 40 degrees and raining sideways, it was chanting and loud and, Oh, it was awesome. We have, the, I think we really do have some of the best fans. We hear you. We appreciate you. We, we really rely on you guys in a lot of ways. And this Quincy game is going to be a big game. Um, ATL is coming in here as the number one seed. And, you know, we, we can't make the playoffs, but this is the championship for us. This is the last game of the year. This is Coach Martin's last game. This is the last game that, you know, a lot of this team is going to be together. It's next year, it's going to be a completely different team. So this is it for us. And I can't wait to see what the fans do. I can't wait to, to play in our new stadium. It's, it's going to be special. You heard it here first. Jackson, the bus, Thebus, thank you for that awesome, those awesome words, the insight you provided. Um, the fans are coming out thick and fast. We're going to sell out the stadium. Look forward to seeing you in person there, running people over, keeping low, uh, and making sure you lead by example. We can't wait to see it, my friend. Absolutely. See you Sunday. Oh, awesome. Let's ride. What a player. What a human. Jackson Thebus, just one of these local stars doing great things in Major League Rugby. Now, switching across, if you like podcasts, we've got three brilliant ones for you. We've got The Pathways with the Free Jacks. we got our CEO, Alex Magleby, with Full Contact and Blood, Sweat and Beers. And that is with Christy Kershey heading to the Olympic Games and Tammy McQueen, the absolute legend on that side. So brilliant stuff. Give it a listen. Give it a peek. Uh, this season, though, has also seen the emergence of a new group of New England Free Jacks fans for Major League Rugby. The first season the team competes. Honestly, one of the best groups showcased at the home matches, helping the team to new levels, as we've heard from players themselves and the coaches as well. And one of those groups is called Jack's Rangers. So let's get them on the chat right now. Our Free Jacks fan of the month, an absolute legend in the making. Thanks so much for joining us. A founder of Jack's Rangers. Hello, my friend. How are you, buddy? Now, listen, let's start with your real name because most people just call you Jack's Rangers. Yeah, it's Phil Harris. I'm originally from North Carolina, moved up here about 11 years ago. Having a lot of fun. And you certainly do, Phil. Now, tell us, how do you come up with the concept of Jack's Rangers and, and what's the goal? So a very good friend of mine does a very successful podcast down in South Carolina with the University of South Carolina Athletics. And I always talk to him about, you know, Gamecocks, but I, I'm a, such a huge rugby fan. So I would call in on his daily live show and bug people about rugby. And somebody was like, you should just start a rugby podcast. And I was like, hmm, let me think about that. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. So that's how it got started. He helped me out tremendously. And Scott, the big guy for our, who's known in rugby circles, helped me out tremendously. Without those two guys, I don't think this thing would even exist. But um, that's how it got started. I was just so excited about the new season for the Free Jacks um, and just, you know, fired up about it. So uh, the name of the Jacks Rangers comes from Whitscombe's Rangers, which is a part of the revolutionary um, New uh, Hampshire line. So they fought in the Revolutionary War. So that's where the name comes from. Oh, that's brilliant. Very appropriate. And love. I also love the branding that you got going on and, and very successful in this first year. Tell us a bit about some of the guests you've had in the past and, and, and who you've had chats to. Man, it's been great so far. We had a lot of super fans. Uh, we've had Spider and uh, Doc, who's also been on there. And he's uh, basically the founders of the uh, uh, First Regiment, which is a great uh, new supporters group for the Free Jacks. And we've had a couple of staff members like yourself join in and Tammy McQueen and the big guy. CEO of the Free Jacks, Max, has been there as well. That's brilliant. I just love love the social media as well. And then from your perspective, because you're on the ground, you're not on the field playing per se, but you're organizing the fans and, and, and that sort of thing. How has the fan engagement gone? What's your experience been like at the matches? 
it's been awesome. That's the reason we started this whole thing is I wanted to increase fan engagement to make sure that people were tuned in and, and got all the content that they needed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's been awesome. I think what really galvanized the fan base is the last game because it was just such in bad conditions at home. Uh, the people that stayed throughout the entire game, I just feel like there was a, a camaraderie that uh, hadn't been experienced before. So I think each week has gotten better and better, I think is the best way to describe it. And I'm so fired up to, to check out Veterans Memorial Stadium there, Fort Quincy. Yes, let's talk about that, right? So it'll be the first time that they played this new venue. It'll also be the last game of the season, riding high off another great victory on the weekend. Tell us what you're going to store for us there at that, that great venue. We just thought of a really awesome thing to do here, and that would be to have some kilts, because uh, our favorite player on this show has been and will continue to be Dougie Fife. Um, yeah. He's from Scotland. So one of our Scottish brothers here in the Jacks Rangers movement, um, Kenny Thompson, he's a very active uh, super fan of the Free Jacks. He thought up an idea of let's get some kilts. Uh, oh, let's put them on. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, um, we're going to have some blue face paint at the game. If you guys want to paint your face up, I'll definitely be rocking the Braveheart look all the way. So that's going to be exciting to open up uh, the vet, you know, the Veterans Memorial Stadium, Fort Quincy, as we like to call it. Fort Quincy, I like that. I love the name. And, and this is the best thing is that you are coming up with this. This is your team, you know, and uh, and you're going to defend the fortress there. The kilts are brilliant. Braveheart, great reference. William Wallace will be proud of that. So will our, our man himself, Dougie Five, try scoring machine. Finally, do you have a message for the team as a whole and the players that have soldiered on this season? Listen, it's been an amazing season. I mean, if you have to grade it, I'd say it's pretty, pretty, pretty damn good, um, ultimately, because this is a team that didn't get a full season last year. This is our first full season, and we were almost made the playoffs. So, And we're still in contention for the third place, um, the bronze medal in the Eastern Conference, which was highly competitive. So we were in it you know, pretty much the entire way there. I, you know, We finally uh, made a really great home stand with only losing one home game, and hopefully we won't lose the one against Atlanta. So I would just say to those guys, I mean, the pressure's off. We're not going to make the playoffs but let's try to finish strong and have fun doing it. You know, I want to see a lot of running rugby. Just take some chances because, I mean, the season's almost over, so you don't have really much to be concerned about. You know, let's, let's have fun. Brilliant advice. And you're so right. If you can beat the number one team in the Eastern Conference to make that statement to finish off the season, I know the fans are loving it. Well, listen, we'll get the face paint ready. We'll get the kilts going. Uh, we'll get the bagpipes as well. That's another big element of the Scot Scottish culture. Uh, and a couple of jars will flow also there. Well, listen, Phil, thank you for everything you do at Jack's Rangers. It's wonderful to see. Keep it up. And I'm so glad we connected. We'll sink some jars on the weekend. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Let's ride. Let's ride. Woo! What a great man. So the comments come flying in there. Very popular man as well is Phil Harris. Look forward to celebrating with him this weekend. And you at Quincy. Plus look to see the army of kilts on the charge. That's going to be brilliant. Can't wait for the photos and the funnels. Um, now, as many of you know, the Free Jacks captain, Josh Larson, he represented Canada recently on their UK tour. So while he was away, I filled in for him a training. Have a sneak peek. Larson! Larson! Oh, what a dummy! What a fan! Jump over the top! Kenny's beaten! Throw on the dummy! Oh! This is the best try you will ever see. See you in Quincy. You can be a fan like me there. Keep the change. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some of the defenders, weren't, they weren't going full out, they said, but a great mullets on display as well. You know, So the goal is to sell out this weekend. There are still a few tickets left. You need to invite your neighbor, call a few friends. It's a family affair. Go to the Free Jacks website, freejacks.com. We'll see you there. Uh, there's a cornhole competition as well. A few spaces left so you can get involved there. Uh, it is going to be absolutely sensational. Thanks, Josh, for that little message there, Bochi. Uh, well, that's a wrap for show number eight in our Free Jacks Live series. Great to be back. Great to have your company along. I know you'll share this later so folks can watch it that missed out. They weren't able to get off uh, for their lunch break here. Just to summarize, we spoke to Free Jacks head coach Ryan Martin in his final week with the side. Captain Joe Johnson, the mechanic, Commissioner George Killebrew sent a great message. He is going to be there this weekend. Players Dougie Five, Harry Barlow, and Jackson Thebus. Plus, we had CEO Alex Magleby and the brilliant group Jacks Rangers. Visit freejacks.com for tickets, merch, and to keep updated with your favorite team. Make sure you be safe out there, and we'll see you this Sunday in the build up to the 7 p.m. Eastern kickoff against Atlanta at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy. As they say here in New England, let's ride. Here's New England. Stick the phases to get it beautifully. Jackson Thebus, the bus is full. Goes over Cecil Africa. Speed bump in the way. Still possession comes for New England. Tolatahu to the outside. It's Dougie Fife, the try scoring machine. Fife gets the first five at the Coliseum. And the Free Jacks have come to play. 
Bangasi for the free jacks for the back. Conradi and it's gaps opened up. Nobody saw that coming, not even Nostradamus. And John Poland gets try number two for the New England Free Jacks. Peter Janssen again, a man that loves the South African bright. The bright for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if he could. His wife won't let him know as Fife goes on the outside. Dougie Fife in a bit of space, gets the offload. Johnson back in field. Bowman is there, cleaning it up though for the Legion is Lewis. First man is good, first man is good. Justin Johnson has this one. 16 out. He's got that long arm open, pinched it. Five yet again, they work the short side. Dummies thrown. Back to Dougie Five. Five looking for the line. Five is over yet again. Oh my Five. This guy is brilliant. The more go strong for Coach Ryan Martin's charges. Bowman comes in as well to help out, and Papaletti's there. Bought the back for Hatakiyama. Playing the famous 34 20, 32 victory over the Springboks in Rugby World Cup 2015. And there it is, all the way for Hatakiyama! Get out of here! Kenny Hatakiyama, one of the best rolling balls you'll see in World Rugby. And it's the Free Jacks. They get try number five.